G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where we're joined tonight by Ian Bellina, a blockchain entrepreneur and investor. He has built $3 million businesses from the ground up and appeared in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, CNBC, Huffington Post, The Street, INC, and Entrepreneur Magazine for his work in analytics, cryptocurrencies, and entrepreneurship a former analytics evangelist at IBM. Ian has bought a data-driven Moneyball approach to investing in blockchain startups, and he's with us tonight from Token Metrics. Ian, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Adam. Ian, let's dive straight into the basics. What is Token Metrics? Who would use it and why? Great question. So Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment research platform. We help cryptocurrency investors find winning investments in trades and filter out scams. So we cater mainly to retail investors and traders. About 90% of our audience are do it yourself investors and traders, people who want to have an edge. Our thesis is that AI and quant investing is the future. Right now, that's been really only done by hedge funds. And we're bringing that same technology and making it available to retail investors and traders. So basically, how it would work, and correct me if I'm wrong, is... I'm a crypto enthusiast. I'm only one man. I've only got so much time in my day. I need to know what is a good buy and what's a bad buy. Is it fair to say that's where you come in? You give me that information? Yes. Right. So we have three main products. One, we have cryptocurrency grades. So we go through and right now we have about 300 different cryptocurrencies where our team has gone through and done code reviews, fundamental analysis on the, on the cryptocurrencies and also tech, automated technical analysis. So without having to be an expert trader, we do all that for you already. Then we take those grades and we come up with AI based crypto indices. So basically build a model portfolios that anybody can follow. At the moment, we have 14 indices that cater to different time horizons to different investors. Uh, and then we also have AI based crypto price predictions. So being able to predict daily price movements in different cryptocurrencies over the course of one month. So basically giving you an idea of where a trend is going, whether a crypto has topped or bottomed. Let's break this down into a practical example. I'm at home, I buy your product, I open up the product and I read it every day or every week, every month. How much time would I, as a user of your product, have to put into it to extract any value out of the data that you find? So people can get value very, very quickly, right? So with that, with that indices, let's say, for instance, we have also people who are brand new to crypto, maybe post pandemic, and they have no idea where to start in terms of how to build a fully diversified portfolio with great cryptocurrencies. So if you go to the indices in less than five minutes, we have different indices that cater to TAA for day traders, indices that cater to long-term hodlers, indices that cater to anybody in between, right? So for example, we have 14 indices. The time horizons are daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. So depending on when you'd like to rebalance your portfolio, we have indices that can be broken down based also on overall grades that we have, or either based on fundamentals, based on technology, based on technical analysis, or based on price predictions. So it's kind of like a very diverse set of indices that anybody can go through there and very quickly know, okay, the coins in this index fit this particular investment or trading style. And as I understand, this includes IEOs. So if there's a coin or a project in the pipeline and it's being created, you give us advice per se on whether it's a good buy or not? Yes. I mean, so with IEOs, they aren't part of the, of the index, but there are, our team does go, through, does go through and grade IEOs. So for example, we have developers that go through the code on GitHub and we go through the technology and then we publish our tech grade on that project. So for example, if a project like Flow, which is an upcoming uh, IEO on CoinList, for example, with lots of interest, that's for the team that made CryptoKitties, for example. Right? So our team goes through and based on the public information available, we go through and typically it's GitHub. We go through to a code review. Uh, if there's something that's that's more well known with more information available, then we'll also do fundamental analysis. And that gives people more confidence in terms of whether they think this is a good investment or not. Now, there's over 3,000 cryptos out there at any given time. Are you doing this for all cryptos? So right now, everything's kind of has been manually done in terms of our team going through doing the code reviews, the fundamental analysis. So we have about 300 different cryptocurrencies in our platform, but we're in the process of retooling our, and revamping our entire grading system to make everything fully automated. Because based on our internal testing, we've actually come up with a more efficient way to grade cryptocurrencies to be fully transparent. For example, a good trader has an accuracy or a win rate on their trades of about 50 to 55%. And for perspective, that's only people that make money. 80% of traders lose money based on almost any academic article you go out there and find studies. So there's one done by the Financial Analyst Journal that says 80% of traders lose money. And the 20% who make money, a good win rate is about 55%. Now with our grades, 
an example of the overall grade, basically getting all the different, different grades and combining them for somebody who wants a balanced approach that has an accuracy of 62% based on our testing. Then purely based on fundamentals, that has an accuracy of 64%. Then for trading is 55%. And our best grade at the moment is technology, basically the code reviews, which has an accuracy of 65%. But in our testing, we've now made a new grade, actually two new grades. One is a new trader grade we plan to launch, where we take our price predictions based on, on, on the AI, and we combine them with our trader grade to create one basically super grade for traders for short-term trading that has an accuracy of 68%. And then we have a new quant grade where we take 54 data points that quant traders and investors use, such as sharp ratio, max drawdown, uh, skew, all these different quantitative data points. And we create a grade based off of this. In our testing, this has an accuracy of 76%, which is pretty wild. So because of this, we now plan to remove the human element out of it because this grade is 10% more accurate than anything our team has been doing manually. And we can fully automate this and just import coins from CoinMarketCap, from CoinGecko, and however our AI go through and automatically score these projects. So we're in the process of launching this. We think by the end of the year, this will be available where now we can go through and get 3,000 coins and very quickly give them grades and give people an edge because with this level of automation and AI, we can now find hidden gems very quickly. So whether a coin is brand new and nobody has heard of it, if the quant data shows that this is a good coin that's trending up, that has a good risk to return ratio based on our analysis, this AI will find that. So before those upgrades come into play, how many coins are we looking at at the moment? About 300 on the platform. So we have the top 100 market cap, then we have some after that, that as well. In preparation for this interview and full disclosure to my viewers and all the viewers out there, I'm not being paid for this interview. I'm learning along the way with Ian and the viewers today, but I did prepare for this interview by doing some pretty deep diving into the company. And I'll share with you some statistics that I found that, are, that I thought they were quite positive. So there was a independent crypto presenter who I have a lot of trust in, and he actually analyzed the data and performance of your platform token metrics. And what we found was in fact, the returns were, were quite good. Again, this isn't me endorsing the company. This is me exploring the company. But based on the data that we went through, as well as the data that you provide, you show past performance. And I, and I did like that. I thought that was quite transparent. The numbers look good. And from what I could tell is essentially the reason why people would use your platform is, as we discussed before, is that they're only one person. They can't do all the research themselves unless they're doing it for their full-time job. But they come to Token Metrics. They pay a monthly fee. And I'm, I'm just looking at your fees now. It's uh, It looks like it's $39.99. I'm guessing that's US per month yes, uh, or $30 per month or $29.99 per month billed annually. And you get three months free by subscribing to the annual plan for just $359 per year. But essentially the return that I would get as a crypto investor in this is that I get information, I get knowledge and I get research. Is it fair to say essentially what I'm paying you for if I get into this is your research and after the upgrades, we get your AI. Yes, yes. So we are a cryptocurrency investment research platform for people who want to save time. But you don't have a token? Uh, no. Now, do you think that would be on the radar? And uh, Like, could that happen in the future? <laughs> um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. We won't go down that path. Yeah. It, I mean, look, the, the reality is, my friend, it just seems logical. When I'm looking into this, I'm like, well, of course... Well, let's face it, which company wouldn't? But we won't go down that path, my friend. Yeah, um, well, because... I mean, I mean, I mean this, yeah, because being based in the US, it's a very, regulation is difficult here, to say the least. I understand. We have to be pretty careful with uh, everything that's happening. But one exciting new de development here in the States is the current SEC membership or administration is basically going to be changing by the end of the month, next month, right? So hopefully that will provide a more promising environment for American companies to develop in the space. I actually feel for my good American brothers and sisters in the crypto space, because basically what's happening is in this long crypto journey, it's quite bizarre to me how some countries are so tight on crypto and others are quite liberal. And I had always seen uh, the good people in America being the land of the free. But when it comes to this type of thing, there seems to be a lot more restrictions on it. However, just on a side note, if you want to advertise cryptocurrencies or anything to do with crypto, for whatever reason, when it comes to Google ads, you can advertise in Japan and America, but not Australia. And it's all backwards. With, oh, wow. with, with new administration coming in and this fast evolving space, I, I think there's room for all of us to grow, which leads me on to investing in your company. And what I mean by that is I come along, I pay my annual membership or my monthly membership. That gives me information. How much time 
would I actually have to spend going into your data to extract out real-time practical data to say, right, I'm going to buy this coin today and sell it tomorrow? Would I be sitting up every night reading through pages of information? Or is it something as simple as uh, saying, no. Adam, buy this now and sell that now? Our entire platform is designed to save time. So whatever coin you would like to look into, we can tell you our thoughts on it. Obviously, not financial advice. That can be done on the first visit. Right? So for example, let's say you go to Tokenmetrics, you put in Chainlink. We'll give you our grade on Chainlink for short-term trading, and we'll also give you a grade on Chainlink long-term. Um, we'll also break that down based on technical analysis. We'll, we'll also give you price predictions. So there's a page with multiple tabs on different options for Chainlink. But everything is designed to give you all the information right there, right then. And when you say short term, long term, and I, I dive into this example just because there is a huge spectrum of investors out here in the crypto space. You've got those who have been investing in what I call traditional markets for many years. They understand all this. But even when they come into the crypto space, the term short and long term or terms long and short term, they actually change. I, have, I joke and say one crypto year is like seven human years because everything is moving so quickly. <laughs> When you go into these analytics of short term, do you actually even define that time and say short term, we mean over the next 30 days? Yes. Yeah. So to us, short term, great, is basically within less than 30 days, right? So for somebody who's a day trader or a swing trader, then for our long term grades, it's typically for a time frame of about a year or so. So somebody who wants long term capital gains tax treatment. Uh, however, in crypto, as you said, crypto, a lifetime happens in like a week. Mm. <laughs> so. Yep. So as a result, if anything, long-term in crypto is more like a quarter. So about three months or, or longer, I would say. I think that's fair. Well, this is probably a good segue into risk. So as an example, I come into your platform, I pay this money. What risk am I facing by investing in you? Great question. Obviously, everything comes with the risk. Uh, so with us, I would say the risks involve just our research, right? So for example, last month was pretty down now for, for crypto. Uh, and our team is also working very diligently every single month or every single time trying to see how we can evolve our models. So by trusting in us, you're trusting in our competence and our ability to be able to improve. And I would say anybody can make money when the market is going up. But the main thing is also being able to protect capital when the market is going down. So that's something our team has been strongly looking into. And as for full transparency, for example, uh, last month, our price prediction index actually had about half of the of its portfolio in stable coins. And this, this was the second month in a row where that happened. First month, lots of our customers complained. We didn't, didn't do anything. Second month, lots of our customers complained again. Uh, so we actually ended up taking off the switch that would recommend stable coins in the, in the portfolio. And then the irony is four days later, the market crashes. <laughs> wow. So after that, we said, okay, you, you know what? Going forward, we'll just stick with our AI no matter what, uh, even if customers give us feedback saying, hey, they don't like this, right? So one of the things we've learned as well is sometimes the customer doesn't always know what's good for them, right? And for us, our team, we have to be kind of be very strong as well with, with our research. And you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to help our customers make money, but also protect money. So you're saying that the customers were getting frustrated because basically money was becoming stagnant in these stable coins where they're saying, hey, yeah. we, we want to get some profits out here. Give us some buys and sells. Yeah. So you're, the AI was just saying, no, just hold steady because it looks like it's going to pull back. Yes. So the AI was basically very conservative and it, it was two months early. So the first month, it wasn't too much because this was at the August was the peak of crypto. So imagine when everyone's on, on cloud nine, on the moon, people are making so much money and they're paying us a service to tell them to buy stable coins, right? So that didn't really go over well initially, right? But over time, the market ended up doing just that and there was a big correction. So with us, uh, that's kind of something our team is now working on going forward. So now we're also looking into tail risk hedging using options as a way to basically buy insurance on our portfolio. So the way that will, would, would work is we'll take our indices and right now almost all the indices have correlation with Ethereum. So as a result, we can go through and calculate the number of options from a quantity perspective and also dollar amount to buy as insurance to protect you from any possible downside risk. So basically buying out of the money puts as options. So for example, options are very limited, but somebody could buy Ethereum put options as insurance so that if there's any crash in their portfolio, would actually profit from that downside. Our team plans to, to launch this year as well. 
I was, I was actually going to ask about options, and I'm glad you raised that because when I was doing my research on this leading up to this interview, I'm thinking, am I giving you my money for these purchases? And it, it doesn't appear that. All I'm giving you money no, for no. is a fixed fee every month you give me data. And that data enables me to buy or not buy on any platform anywhere. I guess what I'm talking about is, is how you make your money. And we've discovered that you, you make your money just from those monthly memberships and not from what we've seen in before where, let's face it, it's a pretty wild, wild west out there in the crypto land. Uh, what I was worried about was we'd be in a situation where they say, hey, buy all of these shares, or sorry, buy all of these cryptos or these tokens or these coins and buy it through this platform. And no matter what happens, whether the coins go up or down, you're going to take a cut on that. But that's not the case because we're not giving no. you the money. We, we, we can buy from, I take your information and then I can buy the coins on any platform that I want. Yes, correct. And, and then with, um, when we expand to options, it, the same is going to be when I'm holding that insurance or going anywhere else. I'm not doing that through you. I'm doing it through any other platform that I'd like to do that through. Yes, at the current moment. So one of the most requested features of functionality is for a automated way to take our indices and be able to, through a non-custodial manner, rebalance your portfolio, right? So our team is currently testing and prototyping what we call a decentralized asset allocator. So basically something built on the, on the Ethereum blockchain through smart contracts. Uh, so kind of following the entire DeFi model of being able to allocate capital efficiently using our AI indices as a feed, as a data feed, and making sure that it's non-custodial and it's decentralized and owned by the, the community and people have control of it, not us. So that's something our team is researching on. So that, that's something that could come in the future. So as token metric grows, a, a little red flag that came up for me that I just want to open up with you is that I thought, well, token metric gets big. They get a lot of subscribers. They're giving out a lot of information to the market. And this isn't unique to crypto. This is standard for anyone who offers, I wouldn't say financial advice, but data advice on shares, stocks, crypto, whatever it is. If you get really big, my concern is, well, why wouldn't you manipulate the market? Why wouldn't you say, buy this coin, you know, for a pump and dump, essentially. What assurance do the viewers have or the subscribers have that as you grow really big and you have the opportunity to do that and say, hey, everyone buy this coin. And so the market floods into that. And then suddenly those who got in there early have just uh, dumped that coin and the price has gone down. Uh, great happened? question. So for example, right now with our indices, we have filters for liquidity. So for example, the, ind the index will only recommend cryptocurrencies that have a daily trading volume over a half a million. And as we get bigger, that threshold would get higher and higher to make sure that whatever we recommend to our customers is liquid and is not something that can be easily pumped and dumped, right? Because at the end of the day, we, we definitely know that that's one, let's say, concern as companies get bigger and bigger, and especially if they're very accurate and good at what they're doing. And then also just being able to just learn from what other companies, because we, we, we aren't the first data provider or analytics provider in capital markets. So going and seeing, seeing what people are doing in, in legacy that's worked and has still been legal by the book, right? And we think being based in the US, we have to do everything by the book for mm -hmm. sure, right? But we think being able to make sure that the, what, we, what we call liquidity ratio, so taking the daily trading volume, dividing by the total market cap and making sure that amount typically is more than 10%. Because our goal is not to recommend pump and dumps, right? So that's why even during... Uh, the DeFi trend and, and bubble in, in a way, we've always made sure to recommend coins that are liquid that cannot be easily manipulated because at the end of the day, we don't want people to be left in a trade or in an investment and not being able to get out. And I think that's where you, you typically see those large price drops, that large price volatility. While volatility is good, to us what's even more important is just long-term happiness and success of our customers. To, to counter my own question, I sort of wargamed this in my head and I thought, well, all you would have to do is recommend two or three pump and dumps and your name would be tarnished forever. Uh, certainly if I was a subscriber and I saw that happen and I'd be out straight away. So I can see in the long term, it's not in your best interest to do that because it would scar you for life and there's not really much recovery from that, especially in the crypto space. We're too tight of a community and we talk. Mm -hmm. So that's reassuring to know. And, and speaking about this community, normally in interviews, we go into, you know, tell us a bit about yourself and about the team at the beginning. But I actually wanted to say that for the end because I want to dive straight into the platform and it looks good. You know, I got to admit, as I said, I'm, I've got no affiliation with you whatsoever. I'm just exploring this and I think you've got a good team. And I just want to talk about your team a bit more and the transition to AI. So what you've achieved is quite impressive. I've looked at the numbers. I've spoken to the community and I'm really impressed. My concern is 
if you shift to AI, is there like completely when you do these upgrades, does this mean that your track record could be tarnished? So I'll actually bring that question back a bit. Tell me a bit about your team first and then mm -hmm. transition into the AI component. So my background, I worked at IBM Watson Analytics for four years, essentially, taking IBM Watson's AI and giving it to IBM customers in line of business. So for marketing teams, uh, sales, finance, basically non-developers, helping them leverage AI in the line of business. Then uh, we have Bill Noble, our chief technical analyst. He comes from Goldman Sachs. He was a technical analyst for Volatile Markets, also worked at Morgan Stanley, Charles Schwab, Morningstar. Then we have Paresh Mansani. He's our CTO. He comes from Goldman, Goldman as well. He was a global IT director at Goldman Sachs and the investment research division. It's not been easy putting this team together, but we definitely want to make sure we, we have the right people who have the right experience. So kind of my background with IBM, their background with Goldman Sachs, and bringing that all together to try to build this platform with the crypto world. And I've, I've also been in crypto since 2016 as an investor. Right, so uh, I've kind of built a brand as an investor, as a trader, uh, and also having Bill on board as well, who kind of brings in that Wall Street experience to kind of balance that our crypto experience. So we think that this is really what's needed to take crypto to the next level because there's so many people who are joining the space, they need guidance. Whether somebody is in the space since 2016 or 2013, but they, they lack the time, or whether somebody has the time, but they lack the knowledge or the how-to because they just joined crypto after uh, post-pandemic. So being able to cater to all kinds of audiences who are trying to do it on their own because most traders lose money, as I mentioned earlier. And we're, we're trying to give them an edge that can help them make money, but also protect the capital during down markets. And we think that's kind of one of the biggest problems with crypto because if you go to any crypto exchange, whether Binance or Coinbase, they're, they're charging you a fee regardless of what happens, right? And we think that's, Long term, that could be detrimental to onboarding. I was seeing what happened, what's happened with Robinhood, with traders there, right? Uh, for example, one, one, one trader unfortunately ended his life because of losing money through trading, I believe it was options. So with us, we think this is actually, uh, in a way, a public good by being able to educate and give people the tools and the power that are typically reserved only to hedge funds uh, and being able to give anybody the capability to do that. And with AI, yes, there are risks involved, but we think AI is the future. Having our grades based fully on AI, we think actually would make it more efficient to find new promising trades a lot faster. But everything we're doing, we're always trying to manage risk because we know that we're not doing this just for us. We have a customer base that we have to constantly serve and constantly make sure we're, we're helping them out. Otherwise they would leave. Uh, so with us, we think AI is the future, but as, as I mentioned earlier, you have to manage that risk. And so far we are. I think for me, when you look at traders, even a really good trader, some of the returns, if you're getting 55% wins, you're doing pretty well. And to me, that, that's a big thing about this. As you transition to AI, in my opinion, you're still going to have losses. And we accept those losses because any, anyone who actually said, hey, we're going to give 100% wins. So there's a big thing in Australia at the moment. The phone is constantly ringing for everyone saying, we make 95% success on trades. And as soon as you, you hear that, it's like, well, that can't be the case because if you were making that type of success, you wouldn't be ringing me and try to sell it over the phone. But what, what is reassuring from your platform is that you don't pretend to make anywhere near that. You don't say 95% of our predictions are accurate. You give a more conservative number of these are the predictions that we make and this is the success we have. And more importantly, you show the data that proves over time that you have in fact given us those results. So getting into trading over the long term from what I keep picking up from you is this is about a long-term relationship between us, the crypto goer, and you, the information provider, to buy and sell over the long term. And as an aggregate over the long term, we're going to win. We are going to win as the consumer because we're getting returns and you are going to win because you've got monthly memberships. Yes. I mean, it's, it's definitely a long-term game. And then, of course, as the crypto space evolves, there will possibly be other areas that you could branch into, which I understand you don't want to discuss. But, mm -hmm. you know, let's face it, it's so, it's so logical where this, for me, it's so logical where this company is right now and where it should be going in the future. But certainly noting some of the restrictions you face in the crypto space and in America, only time will tell. If we want to know more about your site, where can we go to? Uh, give yourself a little bit of a plug of where we can get more information from Token Metrics. So our site is tokenmetrics.com. You can go there, try it out. We have discounted paid trials. So you can try token metrics for as little as two bucks for a week or basically five bucks for one week. 
different plans. Then we also have our channel on YouTube, just search Tokyometrics. We have over 13,000 subscribers. We're posting videos every single day on crypto. Then we also have a weekly live stream, uh, Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time, uh, American time or New York time. And we do that to just really kind of answer any questions to our audience. So we typically go for over two hours, sometimes even three hours each week, me and Bill Noble on, on our team. I'm doing technical analysis, showcasing the platform, answering any questions anybody has on the markets, and just really just kind of building a community of data-driven crypto investors. And then also uh, for anybody on your channel who wants to check out Tokometrics, we'll, we'll actually give you a, a code to use that will give you a 10% lifetime discount. So just uh, put in the code Adam and that, that will help with that. Excellent. I'll leave those links below. Ian, I've really enjoyed speaking with you. I got to admit, I'm even thinking myself of investing in this and giving it a trial and, and seeing how we go. I've done pretty well in the crypto space, but if I can get some of the data that you're offering, hey, for that price, why not? And of course, uh, as I always talk about my channel, about tax, as we start to get some big returns in this, you've got to think about tax. And obviously, in my opinion, this would be a tax deduction, certainly in Australia, because it's part of the money that I have to make there, but not financial advice and not tax advice. Ian Bellina from Token Metrics, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Adam. It was a pleasure being here.